Dear friends of the Tom Flow channel, and a warm welcome to those of you who just discovered this channel. Today we're talking about yet another Fujifilm camera, and not just any Fuji, but my everyday companion, faithful workhorse, and a good friend, Fujifilm X-T30. I've said it before, that my favorite camera was Fujifilm X-10, and this remains true if you consider everything from styling and nostalgia and how the camera feels in the hand and you put the image quality somewhere in the middle. But if I talk about getting the job done stunningly beautifully and with a big smile on my face, the X-T30 is my top pick. Sure you can pay much more and maybe find better, but all things considered, from price to capabilities to quality, this is the camera for me. It's the least likely camera I'll want to sell. To prove it, I own two X-T30 cameras, because one just wasn't enough. I need two because I often need to photograph or film with two identical setups simultaneously, and I don't like to change lenses more than I have to. So why do I love the X-T30 so much? Simple. Image quality, build quality, photography experience. The camera is tiny and does more than cameras twice its size. The dimensions are 118 by 83 by 47 millimeters and the weight is just 383 grams. This is a camera you can hold in one hand and almost hide behind your hand. Think how this works during traveling or uh, street photography or candid photography. I've owned much bigger cameras, but quickly discovered that the size alone matters more than many other features, because I often left my big camera at home and missed out on some amazing opportunities, most notably a convoy of real elephants walking quietly through a suburb of Boston, Massachusetts. All I could do was to follow the elephants as if I were one of them, but no pictures to prove it. Beauty is in the eye of the beholder, as the saying goes. Not all people like the same, but for me the X-T30 is a perfection in terms of design and style as well. I find I'm more likely to enjoy photography if I like the way my camera looks and feels. Steve Jobs said this about computers, and he certainly knew how to market computers. The camera comes in silver, black and charcoal colors. My cameras are charcoal and black. I'm showing you my silver X-T20 here along with the others to display all colors available. I'm really interested what cameras you like in terms of look and feel. Let me know in the comments below if you have a minute. The X-T30 houses an X-Trans CMOS 4 sensor capturing 26.1 megapixels. The sensor uses 2.16 million base detection pixels. Autofocusing is much improved and focusing is better in lower light as compared with the previous Fuji models. The highly customizable autofocus consists of 425 points and its modes are single, zone and tracking and all can be combined with single or continuous focusing method. The ISO goes down to 160, boosted to 80 and the images are clear as crystal. The upper limit is 12,800, boosted to 51,200. The X processor 4 improves on previous versions in terms of speed. The sensor, processor and autofocus system are the same as in the more expensive X-T3. The X-T30 has no image stabilization, but luckily most Fuji lenses have it built in. Then again, even the X-T3 has no image stabilization built in. The smallish cameras often don't have great video capabilities. The X-T30 can function as a real video camera. One may even buy this camera for professional film work. That's how good it is. And I don't mean 5K, 8K, 10K, whatever K. I don't mean frame rates at the speed of light. What I mostly mean is the beauty, clarity, sharpness and richness of the video. Internally, the camera records 6K video to produce best-looking 4K as the final product that can be up to 200 megabits per second. It can do this at up to 60 frames per second. Please see my X-T30 sample video linked below. 
The Fujifilm film simulations make it possible to use the video straight as it comes out of the camera. You have the F-Log and internal film simulations for advanced editing, but simply choose your favorite profile and you're good to go. Boost your dynamic range to 400% if you want, flatten or steepen the curve, change the saturation, sharpness or noise reduction. All this gives you lots of opportunities. You have the cinematic 17 by 9 aspect ratio as an additional option. Base detection is usable during the video. The XT30 video menu is 4 screens long. You can store your video settings completely different from photo settings, making jumping back and forth very convenient. I'm soon going to have a video on how to choose Fuji's film settings for amazing results. Please stay tuned. Not all is perfect about this video though. I'd like to mention the occasional small rolling shutter problem and the continuous 4K video recording limit of 10 minutes. These problems are alleviated in the X-T3 or X-T4. Let me now go on to photography part. I'm assuming this is the main reason you're watching. This is my second video on X-T30. The first one compared the X-T30 with the other X-T double digit cameras. I've also posted sample images of X-T30. You'll find the links to all these videos below in the description part. I'm showing you some sample images throughout this video as well. The camera has mechanical shutter capable of 8 frames per second at full resolution and electronic shutter capable of 30 frames per second. With these limits make sure you got the best SD card in the camera. Electronic shutter allows silent mode, useful when you don't want anyone to notice you taking pictures, such as during a wedding. It allows shutter speeds up to 1 32 thousandths of a second as opposed to 1 40 thousandths of a second for mechanical shutter. The minimum shutter speed for this camera is 15 minutes, making astrophotography possible. The Fujifilm film simulations, 16 in total, are famous and unparalleled. I once thought that they were randomly put together, but now I see a very distinct function for all of them. Many of them mimic actual films from the past. I love Provia for photography and Eterna for video. You can do more, such as color chrome or color grain effects. See my video on Fujifilm simulations below. Most notably, the camera has large and real metal, cold to touch, buttons that feel like controls of a precision instrument. The body is largely made of metal and made to last. The exposure compensation button is something I touch as often as the shutter release. It goes from minus 3 to plus 3, but when set at C, you can access a range of minus 5 to plus 5. The middle button combines aperture priority and shutter speed priority. People new to Fujifilm cameras may find it weird, but eventually agree that it's a curiously logical way of doing things. The left button switches between the modes like bracketing, etc. The nice buttons will make you spend less time searching in the menu. And this is a good thing, because I'm not a huge fan of Fuji's menu system, especially compared to Nikon. I own a list of Fuji cameras, but I still get lost in their menus on a regular basis. Up top is a button that lets you convert the camera into a fully automatic tool. This is useful when handing the camera to someone who does not have experience with this particular camera. The flash button will make the flash appear from out of nowhere. The flash hides itself where you'd find the optical viewfinder in classic cameras. Note that the X-T3 does not have an internal flash. The flash is a good filler flash, but not much more, as it's on a weak side. Next to the lens mount you have a small lever that switches between single focus, continuous focus and manual focus. The switch is a bit small, but precisely where I want it to be. Single focus is what it says, continuous focus will always try to refocus. For some time I didn't like how it jumps around, especially in the video, until I discovered that if you make its settings most sluggish and fixed, the continuous focus becomes really usable for automatic filming from a gimbal if you don't have any fast movements. The settings for me are tracking sensitivity 4 and autofocus speed minus 5 or some other reduced value. 
Manual focus is what I use more often every day. The camera has focus peaking with an option to enlarge the image and colors the areas that are in focus using your favorite color. This takes all guessing out of manual focusing. The LCD screen of this camera is touch sensitive and has over 1 million dots. This is super nice for focusing. Whatever area you want to focus, just touch the corresponding part of the image. The screen has swipe functions. The screen comes out of the camera body and turns up and down, but not sideways. So the X-T30 is not a great video logging camera. But the screen moves enough for convenient macro work. The electronic viewfinder has 2.36 million dots and is nice and bright. I like the eye sensor. When you put your eye near the viewfinder, the screen turns itself off so that it doesn't blind you. This viewfinder is preferable to the DSLR viewfinder because you see what you're photographing with all effects applied. You can navigate the menu and change things on the screen by touching or by using the small 8-way joystick. I'm not a huge fan of the joystick and its location. I'd prefer to press a 4-way pad instead the way it was on the X-T20. But I know most people are different from me here. The Q button lets you access the most important settings upon a single press of a button. Many people complain about the location of this button and how it was much better on the X-T20. They say it's easy to accidentally press it. I see this as a small problem. Focus lock and exposure lock allow you to lock the focus and exposure conveniently. Again, they are more useful for videos. I like them both. Fuji's focus has been said to trail behind some others, most notably Sony. With the X-T30, I don't see any problems at all. It's plenty fast for me, especially with the Fuji XC 15 to 45 mm lens. The turnable buttons in front and back of the camera can be used for ISO and aperture settings, for example. I say for example because these buttons, just like two other buttons, are programmable and you can give them new identities as you wish by holding down the button for two seconds. The small function button on top is what I've programmed to switch on and off the face recognition. I want it on when I photograph people, but I don't like it when the camera thinks that some rocks by the sea look like faces. Speaking of face recognition, you can even specify which eye of the person should be focused on, and this works also in the continuous mode. Face select lets you choose which person to prefer. Face detection always takes priority over the chosen autofocus mode. The connection ports are behind the small door. You have socket for 2.5 mm microphone connector, the smaller one, USB-C, and micro HDMI. So you can use a cable to both transfer images from the camera and charge the battery as well. The tools that let you compose the scene better are fun. The grid can help you follow the rule of thirds. The electronic level lets you get your horizon right. You can have the camera beep at various things, but the first thing I do is disable all sounds. Interval shooting is a great option. You can program your camera to take photos automatically every so many seconds. This is perfect for time-lapse photography, which I enjoy a lot. I combine this with electronic shutter to not put a burden on the mechanical shutter system. Moving on to the bottom of the camera, you start to see some problems. All of a sudden, the camera has become more plastic and more fragile and not scratch resistant. The delicate paint on the bottom should be replaced with something more durable in the future designs. Luckily, you can purchase a handle frame that you've already seen in this video. This improves the grab of the otherwise small camera but more importantly protects the delicate belly of the otherwise well-armored tank. The X-T30 takes the standard Fuji camera battery NPW126S. The battery life is fully adequate, certainly hundreds of images. Battery can be charged inside of the camera via a USB cable or in a separate charger. It takes just one SD card, which is logical considering its size. The camera is not weather resistant like its bigger brother, the X-T3. 
This is expected because the X-T30 shared the sensor and image quality with the more expensive X-T3, but there must be something that makes it cheaper. If you ask me if it's a good idea to purchase this camera, I'd say that I don't think you could make a much better decision. Thank you for spending your valuable time with me and listening to me talk about the camera I use the most. I appreciate your attention. I'm already looking forward to seeing you in my future and past videos about Fujifilm cameras and gear, but also other photography related topics. Have a great day.